<laughs> okay. Getting ready here for video number three. It's two minutes to five. I'm going to give a couple more minutes for people to come on. And we're just trying this in the regular old Facebook Live. Let's see if this works. Don't see this posting. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, great. It's always an adventure. <laughs> okay. All right, so here we go. This is um, class number three in the Caregiving um, for Dementia series. So if you are just tuning in, um, what we have done so far is um, we kicked off last Sunday and we did a, a class kind of, of encouragement, which I called, There Might Be Good Here. And there I kind of shared a little bit about my own experience caregiving with my mom and um, how there were some blessings in that experience, not at all to diminish, to diminish the challenges that were there, but just to say that I think, um, you know, there are, are things that we can, be, we can receive and we can give we can be given and that we can um, uh, are hard to find in other places and in other ways that they're just very unique to dementia and that that, that can be a good thing <laughs> um, and then today we continued with organization which was the video I just did and it's available now below and there we covered um, organization for records or files and paperwork. We covered medical records. Um, we covered care partners and communication. So, like, how do we? What are some tips around that? We looked at the house, and we looked at travel and um, emergency um, preparedness. So, you know, obviously, I only had an hour. I didn't go into depth on all of those things. But what I would like to do with this series is I really want to hear from you all. Like, I, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to try to use my experience to help in any way that I can. So what, I, what I'm doing is kind of bringing up these topics and saying, these are things we tried or these are things we thought about. And then what I would like is to hear from you to say, yes, actually, I would like to know more about how to travel with my loved one who has dementia, or I would like to know more about how to go through my house and where to start and what changes to make, or I would like to know more about creating an about me book, whatever, any things that I mentioned, um, I, I would love to hear from you where, where you have uh, what resonated for you and where you have interest, and then I will um, put, put, some, create, put some things together to help um, answer those questions. Um, so, and then uh, today, uh, what we're going to do in this video is, uh, gonna, I called it Identify Your Gaps. So this one is a little different because it's a little bit more of an exercise. <laughs> um, it's a little bit more of an exercise for each of you. Because what I'm going to ask you to do is to think about um, where you are in terms of of these kind of eight categories that I used for myself and and kind of reflect a little bit on where do you feel vulnerable and um, where where do you feel like you kind of know where you are you're good and then how can you put together a map for yourself to to 
feel like you have your your arms and what you you have your self um, you have your hands around the situation at least a little bit so that's what this one is about so you know I remember like in my own experience there were many different stages of the dementia um, care there was kind of initial reaction questioning is this dementia are we sure are we not sure how much control do we need to have here you know just kind of watching and like starting to feel like there was more than just than just memory loss but there there was something that was that was going on that that needed extra attention but maybe not sure and and trying not to overstep and so i think in that stage um i would say it's a good time to be pulling in information and having building your communication and support networks and just putting feelers out there um, but as you go along then then there's um, more focus on the, the actual relationship of caregiving you actually become the caregiver you start to kind of grow in the role and um, and so that can that can create difficulties depending on where you are in your life and what you um, what resources you have available to you and so it's it can be very different for all of us and I think that's one of the challenges around around trying to help people who are caregiving for dementia is that that we can be so different you know on the one hand we're the same <laughs> we know things we have things in common on the other hand like we can be so different like I know people who are in their 30s who are caregiving for um, a, a sibling who has early onset dementia that experience is going to be very different than someone who is a spouse caring for their spouse of 50 years who has um, dementia versus somebody who is was like my situation where I was a daughter and I was caring for my mother who had dementia and had siblings and had my own children, uh, my own child um, at the time, but my own family as well. And I was, you know, sandwich generation trying to manage both, both um, roles. So all of these things can be different. And then of course, you know, we can live in different parts of the country. We might have resources available to us or not. Um, and we might have more stressful situations in our lives from just our work or our home or, you know, finances or whatever. So, you know, we all are gonna have vulnerabilities and we're all gonna have strengths too. So um, what I have done, if you went to the, if you went to the website and, um, typed in your email then you should have the download for um, for the three things so far so you would have this the agenda for the seven classes you would have the um, cheat sheet for the organization uh, class that I did earlier today and then you would receive this um, what I call the my map document which is it's really simple again I'm trying to keep you know I don't want to overwhelm anybody and I have to use lots of color so, but this is what you should, you would be able to download. Um, and if you just, if you put your email in on my website, then you will be able to download this. It's free. So it's my website, um, if you don't know it already, is, is bethreeves8keys.com. And then you just do forward slash caregiving. And that gets you to the page where you can download this. So um, what I have done is, basically taken this wheel that I created after caregiving for my mom and it was to just help me stay sane and be organized and and understand what things mattered like what did I need to think about and how did I know if I was covering the right things so so I have these eight categories and then up here I just have a place where we can take notes so it's just a little worksheet for you and and um, you can you can print it out as much as you want you can share it with people I, I don't mind it's fine so um, this is for you to use in any way that you wish but what I'm going to do today is just kind of walk you through it a little bit so that hopefully I can get you thinking and then you can start to take take this away and work on it and take some notes that would be useful for you so so here we're gonna go I'm gonna start um, with this green one here which is money 
So money is obviously um, a big stressor and can be a really big category for people when they start to think about caregiving. And also I should mention when we start to think about ourselves, I know that that happens, um, happened for me is like, okay, I'm worried about caregiving. I'm worried about my mom. And I also, what does this mean for me, for my family? You know, like there's that, there's those two, two different levels of concern. Um, so the first thing that I want to invite you to think about when you think about money is I, I have keywords for this category. So why do we worry about money? The reason that I have money here and that we need to think about it, I say, is that it ties into our safety and our options. So if we have um, money, we can feel safe and we can feel that we can explore options. And when we don't have it, we can feel risky and makes us nervous and that we can't explore options. And the reason I want to use those words is because then if, um, if you think about it that way, you might come up with some other ideas. For example, if you think, oh, you know, I'm feeling really nervous, I'm feeling like I'm not safe or that I wish I could explore options, then I would invite you to be curious and, and ask, you know, what, what would make me feel safe? What is it that's making me feel unsafe? what are the options I wish I could explore? You know, is there any way I can take any steps to exploring them? You know, uh, anyway. And just kind of like think about like the broader, the broader picture of that. The second thing I wanna invite is, I feel like we often don't give ourselves enough credit for things that we have in our lives that we have invested in that aren't showing up in our bank account. And a lot of those resources are so valuable and maybe even more valuable than what does show up in our bank account. <laughs> so I like, you know, even though the title of this category is money, I like to start off the bat and say, let's talk about resources. Because if you have um, invested in, if you have strong friendships, if you have a strong support network, that's worth a lot. It's worth a lot and and it can actually uh, affect your money like it can actually save you money if you have a strong support network but it's also just worth a lot that <laughs> might not even just be financial right it means a lot to have support likewise if we've um, invested in our home or if we have a strong uh, mental outlook if we have um, organized ourselves if we have simplicity in our lives those are all things that can make a difference as far as um, how, what resources we have and what our expenses are. So one of the things I like to ask in money is kind of where, where do you feel you have resources? And give yourself a little credit first for those things. And, you know, what have you invested in? You know, it could be, if, even if you've invested in, your artwork, or if you have something that gives you joy and where you find meaning in your life, if you have an activity like that, that's worth a lot. I know that I went for a period of time where I, I didn't have anything. That was, it was difficult to find anything that could give me joy. And, and, I, and I have it now, and I realize what a gift it is to have something that really you can do that makes you happy. So whether it's music or a pet or going outside or doing art or, um, you know, doing a yoga class or, or having a spiritual practice or reading or, you know, or, or, or right? whatever, whatever it is, um, give yourself credit for that. That is a resource and that is something that is valuable. So that's that category. But I also want you to just kind of think about it and make notes of, you know, what is your fear there? Do you have fear? How strong is your fear? Is this an area that's bringing up um, significant concern for you that you want to work on? Okay, because then what we can do is we can then the next step is focus on what to do and if this is the area that kind of is the most strong for you. Okay, um, so the next one here um, is simplicity, the purple one. And simplicity is one of my favorites. Um, you know, I, I think it surprises people sometimes when it's on the wheel because they're like, eh, what does that mean? Um, but 
for um, for my mom, she every all the moments of transition are also in the moments that have the greatest stress. And my mom grew up in the depression, and she was an artist, so she had she had lots of stuff. So moments of transition were actually um, very difficult. And I realized that if we had simplified, or if she had simplified, if she had identified her priorities and simplified her life, then in those moments of transition, it would have been a lot easier. So the question here for you is kind of, um, how do you think you would manage change for yourself, for your loved one, and what are the things that we can do to, to simplify that, to get ready, to get ready for the change? You know, there's a saying that says, um, I can't stop the waves, but I can learn to surf. And I think that that's really what this class is about in general is like, you know what, we're in the ocean and there's waves around us. We can't stop the waves, but what can we do to learn to surf as much as we can so that we can maybe enjoy the ocean a little bit, <laughs> right? So... Um, so here's the class that I did before kind of around organization that would have been, you know, kind of working on this category of like, how do we, how do we simplify? How do we organize ourselves to, to be strong here? But make a note if this is something where you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling disorganized and scattered and whatever, like maybe that's an area you would like to focus on. So you could put a little, a little star next to that one. So then the next one is health. Now that's kind of obvious um, why it's on here, but I do like to talk about what I call the three M's, which are the, the three categories that I feel um, are most likely to cause a health crisis. So, you know, all of us want to stay independent. We want to stay strong. We want our loved one to live as long as possible. And they are um, already having vulnerability, right? So, but where, where do they, where is their greatest area of vulnerability? Let's think about it because, you know, it's always going to be different. And where are their strengths? So, like, if, if your loved one, um, like, so, for example, my mom, obviously she had dementia. Oh, sorry, and the three M's, I didn't mention them. So, the three, the three M's are mind, mood, and mobility. So, so mind is, of course, um, not only dementia, but just memory and decision making, um, you know, that sort of thing. Mood is what is your stress level? What is your happiness, uh, depression level? What about anxiety? What about loneliness? Like, how do you, how are you feeling, right, is, is mood. Mobility is not only physical mobility, like, are there a danger of falls? Is that significant danger? It's also internal mobility, so like heart strength, digestion, you know, um, organs. <laughs> and, and so, you know, for my mom, her physical body was pretty good, actually. She didn't have a lot of um, medical issues, and she didn't have a lot of medication for her body. She did have um, some depression, and she was on medication for that. And she did have, of course, dementia, and then she had some... Um, a little bit of anxiety from, from time to time. So, and then falls, you know, was less of an issue, but she did have some heart stuff. So we kind of, you know, knew that we could take her out on a field trip, for example. I could walk with her around the block and not worry too much. You know what I mean? Like I knew what her strengths and vulnerabilities were, and so I kind of could adjust what we did for her. So in this category, um, it's just an uh, opportunity to kind of think about what, write down, like, what, what do you think about your loved one? Like, is it, you know, what have you identified as, like, the strengths and weaknesses? And is there anything there that you're most concerned about that you would want to work on? Or are you um, feeling like this area, you know, other than, you know, you have dementia or whatever, but it's, it's you are understanding it and you want to work on something else. Um, so then the next one is legacy. Um, legacy is about um, our story and what we're leaving behind. And, you know, it's actually really interesting. Um, I've known a lot of people that have, have actually 
been able to capture some legacy uh, even though their loved one had dementia. And sometimes it was surprising and maybe even more um, healing or more true um, with, with the dementia as a player in the conversation because things were more open or topics could come up or whatever. But legacy, I mean, it could just be, um, do you want to film some conversations with, with your loved one? Do you want to work with somebody to put together a nice video of, of their life? Do you want to um, make sure that their, um, their, the quilts that they've made are safely secured? Or like, you know, whatever. What, what is it that you want to think about for the legacy? It's just kind of, a, a, again, a, an area that I feel is an opportunity to have a little bit of fun you know, which is important. <laughs> we need those too. Um, and then the next one uh, is even more fun, and that's happiness. And here, I really do want you to think about your happiness as well as the happiness of your loved one. Um, you know, caregiving, of course, we can often not think about ourselves. And uh, even if we want to, we can't find the time. But or know where to begin, which is so exhausted. Ah, I don't know what to do, but it's so important. And um, I, I can vouch for the fact that if we can take some breaks, we can come back to the situation so much refreshed and bring so much more to the relationship and to the caregiving. Um, so how can, how can you find those moments? How can you find those opportunities? Um, one of the things that I like to do in happiness um, is I bring in a guest who teaches laughter yoga <laughs> and um, I'll actually uh, post a video below because it's just it's so funny to see and fun to see people just laughing for no reason um, but it makes such a difference they've shown that if you laugh for five minutes like a belly laugh like a deep belly laugh not only do you reduce your stress and reduce like uh, your depression because you're releasing all of these great neurochemicals but you're actually working out your body. You're actually, five minutes of belly laughter is equivalent to 20 minutes of, of rowing from a cardio standpoint on a rowing machine. So, you know, if we just laugh. <laughs> okay, I mean, you get the gist. It doesn't have to be a real laugh. It doesn't have to be, you know, for any particular reason. It can just literally be a laugh for no reason. It's still beneficial. So that's always, you know, something like that or doing some breathing exercises, doing some stretches. Uh, there are some, some good tips, and I'll be covering those. Um, I think it's the fifth class. I do a class that's um, self-care, and we'll actually go over those a little bit more deeply. So happiness. And then also um, for your loved one, it's a place to think about their happiness, you know, um, are they doing activities that are fun for them? You know, do you want to take some time and explore other ideas for them, for their growth, for their learning, um, and, you know, for their peace of mind? Like, what is bringing them joy, basically? Okay, so then the next category, I'm doing it, I'm good. Support is this one that's kind of dark red. Support, and that one, um, we're looking um, at the, the network of people. So, of course, we are supporting someone. We also want to look at who's supporting us. Where do we find support? Uh, and it might not be a who. Like, we might find support from, from a, a pet or from a uh, being outside or from uh, music or spiritual practice or, you know, whatever. Like, we might find support in, in the non-human forms. Um, but we also here do look at our support team and our communication with that support team and um, to make sure that we are aware of the resources that are in our community. So if you're feeling like you need support and you, you don't have that team and you don't know where to begin, then you might wanna start with this category. And again, so just kind of like write that down, make a note of it, because what we're gonna do is just you allow you guys to all create your own, um, identify what's most important to you and kind of like create your own map, you know, so you can like start working on it. Um, one of the classes that I went to, we have a thing here in Durham, North Carolina, that's called the Caregivers Summit. It's a great event that brings together all people that are working around caregiving. And there was a talk 
um, from the, uh, there's a Duke Family Dementia Support Program, and they talked about creating your care team as if you were creating a board, and that, you know, think about all of the different people that would be at the table. And it was interesting, because it's like you just forget. You're like, oh, yeah, there's, you know, there's the pharmacist, there's the nurse, there's the, the family, there's the, you know, insurance provider there's you know what i mean like there's so many people that are involved you know there's the person who does my mom's nails <laughs> you know whatever right like all of these people are part of that care team so um uh having the that put together really can feel better because you're like okay i'm not alone you know i'm not alone and also online support like you know just even from putting this class together i found some amazing support groups of facebook groups that are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, one of them is a dementia, I think it's just dementia family caregivers. It has kind of like a orange red sunset picture on it. Um, and I can try and find that and like type it in, in below so that if you would like something like that, it just people share their stories. It's just really helpful to see other people going through things, hear them, you know, cry with them, celebrate with them. You know, like that connection is really important. Um, and sometimes that's all we can do when we're stuck at home, right? If we can't get out and get to meetings and find like those online resources are sometimes really important. Okay, so uh, this last two here, we have the blue one, which is purpose. And purpose, you know, is so great because, um, and I think it's often overlooked because people with dementia, they get diminished. It's kind of like, oh, you can't do that. You're not able to do that anymore. And people are controlling everything around them. And it can be really hard for them then to feel like they have meaning in their lives or that they have purpose. And it's, it's tied to happiness. It's tied to health. It's part of life. And if we don't have a purpose, it's kind of like we don't feel like we exist or that we matter. So we want to think about how can our loved one have purpose and meaning? How can they share? How can they contribute? And, um, you know, hopefully kind of like independently or we can support them to do that. But um, there are, of course, daycares that specialize in this and there are suggestions out there. Deepa, um, sorry, Tipa Snow is amazing. She's um, offers a lot of online videos which are free and she talks about activities at different stages that you can do with your loved one. Um, so that's a, a great resource for you. Yeah. Um, and then for yourself, I think, you know, again, like I always try to like, you know, say, yes, this is for your loved one, but also take a moment <laughs> and think about yourself too. Like, you know, yes, maybe right now our lives are completely busy and we can't reflect too much on what gives us meaning or where we contribute, but, but maybe we can just think about it for a moment and say like, okay, maybe right now I can't volunteer at that organization, but when I, you know, five years from now or whatever, like I want to keep that, I want to put it up on my wall and put it on the fridge. I want to remember that that's something that's important to me and I want to participate in it. You know, I have a goal for my career. I want to, I want to do this thing and I want to just put it up there. Even if I'm not going to see it right now, I want to put it up there and remember, or I want to take this trip or whatever it is, right? Something that can make you remember some, a goal that you have. Okay. And then the last one is this beige one here. Um, and that is preparation. And that is where we talk about um, end of life. We look at end of life. And, you know, it can be a little different for somebody with dementia. Um, you know, we might not um, be able to ask them questions because they, you know, if, we, if we've missed that opportunity, maybe beyond the point where we can have a conversation with them about what their wishes would be. Um, but we can, you know, we can still try. There's actually a card game and I'll post it below, um, which is quite fun. And um, and I think I talk about it in the, there's a the class that's called Timeline No Fear. And we kind of look more more in depth at things around end of life and, and how to, to be brave, <laughs> how to be brave and to think about them and have conversations about them. And there's a game actually that we can play that uh, is a card game called the the wish game as opposed to fish <laughs> okay and um so so yeah we look at that we also talk about like palliative versus hospice care 
in there. So if you are working on that, if you feel like you don't have your documents in order, if you're feeling like, um, or you, maybe you're getting close to that point and you feel like you need, wish you understood more about the difference between palliative care, hospice care, when can you bring them in? You know, what about insurance at the different levels? What about long-term care? You know, that kind of thing. Um, that would be an area that you would want to like put a star by. Like that's something I want to work on right now. So I'm not saying all of this to be overwhelming. <laughs> I just I just want to give you a framework to help you focus. Because you know, right now, like when I was going through this, I I wouldn't have a system. And so I would just be inundated with information and, and I would get really stressed. And I would feel like I was never really getting anywhere. And then I would feel more stressed. <laughs> so what I like to do with this is, is just write things down. And, and then I can see it. And, and then I can say, OK, this, this one is, seems really strong for me. I really want to work on that. And then I just kind of brush the other ones aside a little bit. And I focus on that one. And then, and then I can get help. I can find out, okay, where do I go from here? What is my plan? What is the most important step I can take? What is one step I can take this week on this area to help me feel better? And then I can do it, and then I can mark it down on my sheet of paper, and I can feel like I accomplished something, <laughs> and I can see that I did. And I think that for, for, for me, you know, when my brain was tired and, and my body was tired and my emotions were tired, having something like this where I could be like I did this one thing and I know it made a difference you know what I mean this was working on something that was mattered that really helped me so that's that was my goal with this is to have it be something that is supportive for you and is a tool that makes you feel a little bit more in control and a little bit more relaxed actually because even though it is a wheel and there's eight categories you get to pick what matters to you you don't have to do all eight things. It is totally fine. You do not have to do all eight things. I mean, this our um, life is very big, and we are very complicated people, and we can make all sorts of choices. So it would be totally fine if you don't want to do any of them except happiness. No, <laughs> but whatever, right? Like we make all the choices, but I want, but we can make conscious choices, and I think that if we can see the map and we can think about it and then we can say oh okay i see you know what's important for my loved one where my loved one is struggling here where i can help or not help you know like where i can focus my energy and actually make a difference and and then take a step so so that's the goal with this one okay so that was a lot of information and i See, oh hey Lizzie, hey. Um, so I, I just finished um, the presentation on identifying your gaps, um, but I hope that if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer questions. And I do hope that just through the continuing to do this series, that you all will feel, you know comfortable writing in comments and give me your suggestions and your feedback. Um, as I, after I finish this particular series, my goal is to kind of continue every Sunday at three, bringing in resources that I have found to be helpful and um, just continue to hear from you what, what I can do to help because that is my goal. So, I'm so glad that you could be here. And the next two series, I will be um, next Sunday. And where's my sheet? Here it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. So next Sunday is the 22nd. And what we'll be covering is at 3 o'clock, I'm doing small steps. So we'll kind of build on what we just did today. Um, and we'll talk about dementia as a long game. You know, like I think so often we we want to always uh, try to fix things. <laughs> so we see something that's not perfect and we're like, we want to make it better. 
And with dementia, of course, that's really difficult to do. It's just not very fixable. So we talk about having, having a long game and really creating a plan that can be sustainable and that can, that can move and be flexible and get us through the whole, the whole path that we're going to go down. And then we talk about breathing and we talk about kind of building our action plan. That's small steps. And then at five, we do timeline, no fear. And that is where we are going to be bold and we are going to look into the future for each of our situations. And we're going to say, you know, where are we in this, in, in the um, steps of dementia as it's defined and um, how may that look for us and kind of like, you know, where are we going from here? Trying to kind of at least see that. And then talking about end of life and what are options and what are conversations that we should have with our loved one if we can or with ourselves or with other people in our lives. And how is that a little bit different when we have somebody with dementia? What are things to consider? So, so that's both um, next week. And then the last class which will be on the 29th is when we will do uh, some care for ourselves and kind of look at what it really means to be a caregiver and how that role um, matters like we need to process that ourselves and understand what that means and also are there boundaries that we can set as a caregiver what does that mean and how do we take care of ourselves what are some resources? And I'm going to bring in lots of resources in that class because I have a holistic health background and I love, love those things. So I'm going to bring in as many resources as I can to help support you as caregivers. And then the last one, which is 5 o'clock on the 29th, the last Sunday in September, and we will go over um, kind of putting it all together. How do you take this information and feel, feel like you can use it? So what is your treasure? and um, give yourself credit for what you have done and kind of go back over what we've, what we've talked about and just kind of summarize. Um, as I mentioned, I do have a handout that's on my website. So if you go to bethreeves8keys.com forward slash caregiving and put in your email, then you'll get to download just the things for these first three classes. So the agenda, the cheat sheet for organizing, and then the eight keys, my map that we just went through. Um, and by the end of this course, I'm going to put together a book list of all the books that I mentioned and a glossary of terms. So I'll be sending that out as well. So thank you so much for being here. And, um, and thank you for allowing me to try these different approaches to technology. This one was on live Facebook, so you can let me know which ones worked for you. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you for journeying along with me. It really means a lot. Take care, everybody.